that's what this whole awakening process brings up for a lot of us. Colleen is the queen yeah. of noticing these little isms. I'm, I'm surprised Colleen didn't write it. She probably will have something to say about that. But we also have a new, a new listener, Rick, from Oklahoma. So thanks for tuning in, you two. Oh, Rick is not new. Rick, that's Rick Estep, who was actually... Oh, that's right. Rick, Rick, Rick out here. So he made it back. He was actually camping in Yosemite after he went uh, on the show here with us. He made yeah. an intentional detour to come to Laguna, sit in our studios with us for about 20 minutes with his son, and then headed out to Yosemite. So thanks, Rick, for always tuning in. It's, it was great to have you here. And we're just building this family of support, so talking about high vibrational things. I mean, the world is full of stuff to kind of bring your energy down, and, and ultimately, I, I believe, it's the very simple message of making a better consumer out of you. And the thing that does that is sort of tie into your fear, this low hum of, of fear and agitation and a sense of lack and, um, I don't know, suspicion. So that's what the news runs on. It gets you tuning back into that. And really, the, all the news cares about is you're watching the commercials because that's the way they make their money. And the companies that are running the commercials only care about you going and buying their product. So as soon as you unplug from that particular matrix, you got to think, what am I plugging into instead of? If I'm not going to run into this media empire that just says, you're not enough, you don't have enough, you're not good looking enough, you don't have money, enough money in the bank, not driving a nice enough, nice enough car, all those things, as soon as you unplug from that, you better be ready to plug something else back in. And that needs to be just the pure energy of you, who you really know you are to be, who you were born to be, this, this set of gifts and talents, unique awareness that you have, and these gifts to share, that's what you're awakening to. And it's a huge, it's much bigger than the, the media empire, but it do, it's not reinforced, so it doesn't feel like it. But now we have shows like this, and we get to talk about this process and grounding in. It's kind of that late campfire conversation when you talk about the big issues in life, or when you go to church and you tap into that message momentarily, but we want to remind you just how important it is to, to keep it running in your inner dialogue, that your subconscious is running this message, why am I here? What am I doing? And, and this is Bear's message. Yeah. This is Bear's message at 11.11. Right. There yeah. you go. We are at 11.11. I mean, yeah. I, I, and Bear, do you, you want to throw something into that? Um, I, I, uh, my I thing is I make about. videos, and I have a lot of videos talking about why I'm here, and it's basically that I was a spirit before this body. My spirit in resides in this body and when this body goes then the, my spirit will remain and so therefore everything is just about gaining experiences with the body so anything you do is just it, it's just so that you could do that because when when you're a spirit you don't you can't touch you can't you can't use your senses and you can't orgasm so <laughs> yeah so i mean it's we came to have these experiences travel all that you can't do that stuff without a body so uh, just live life to your fullest if you live life to your fullest then you have accomplished something great in this life that you, you live off grid I mean yeah. essentially you pretty much live off grid well I'm working on it I mean yeah I do live out in the middle of nowhere I have my own well and my own septic system I grow a lot of my own food um, I'm working on getting off the grid I've been on the grid since the beginning and uh, you know I'm, that's just been part of my dream and I'm working on it but I'm close I got some of the stuff, but Certainly I'm not getting there more yet. doable now with yeah, you know, I mean, solar energy well, and efficient batteries and things like that. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: if if um, if something happened, because like this originally came about because I said how like I feel like I'm on an arc, and be in in case something happens and um, there's not what we, people know to live on, and I think if it happened, I'm ready. I got it all there. I'll just put it together real quick. Right. But I'm pretty close. You know, I feed. And, and it's it's not about being on just one piece of land. It's about the community in your area. And I'm like part of a group of farmers who they all do different stuff and we all work together and we know that we can trade this for that. And so it's about community, really, not just an art. That's all. Awesome. But the, what you were talking about, I don't know if we should transition into the into the wake to the um, Integratron. Integratron because you were talking a lot about Noah. And that's this whole thing came about right after I had written an email saying how I felt like I was Noah. And then I seen a rainbow. And the stuff that you're talking about in the Integratron, it's like that. You know, I, I said I seen the Eye of God. On another side, I uploaded it. That was the title of it, the Eye of God. Um, so it's like 
yeah, the whole thing that you're talking about, and I'm there, and it's like, whoa, this is such a trippy. I mean, the drawings you made, it's like, whoa, okay, wait a minute. Well, and that's uh, reaching into, we're kind of moving into, We I produced a video with uh, Lana Luna out of Arizona called Sonic Geometry, and it was primarily straight line geometry, taking the sums of that, playing those as frequencies and realizing that those are harmonic frequencies and those numbers hiding in there are all over the place in our lives as well. Either told in mystery numbers or contained in sacred buildings and sites or whatever. So uh, there is definitely a mystery to dive into there, but what it led me to at the Integratron, this big circular, looks like a spaceship building, I'm trying to describe it for listeners, looks like a UFO. But it is a frequency energy machine. Um, and what we did there is take these frequencies, but what started opening up, I started reading books by its inventor, George Van Tassel, who believed that he was visited by many times by either a literal alien that he could see and, and touch and, and aboard his spacecraft, or just getting messages like... Uh, I guess you might call it channeling or, or just hearing these voices and he called it the Council of Seven Lights and they were trying to sort of set him straight on the ideas of certain things and of all things that I wasn't expecting we started talking about curved geometry how important that really is and I wasn't expecting to read George Van Tassel's information talking about the importance of curved geometry and the arc and a very specific arc, 60 degrees of arc, or one-sixth of a circle. That's the, that's the arc that's in what we call the flower of life or seed of life pattern. When you see the petal of that flower, one half of that petal, one side of it, is 60 degrees of arc. And if you start there, we had a guest on our show, um, Michael Evans, who took that flat um, geometry and made it three-dimensional. And when you start doing that, it's really like a whole world opens up with it brings everything together, but it was relative to an arc. And this same arc is the one that's in the all-seeing eye or the eye of Horus or the eye of Providence that we see all over the place from our dollar bills to the Egyptian eye of Ra and all these things. And he, he got the message that the arc was never supposed to be ARK about a boat, but ARC as a, as a, like a time span or a density of, uh, of existence, and then even the Ark of the Covenant, our agreement with God or gods of how we should live on this planet, was never an Ark, it was an ARC, again, it was the Ark of the Covenant. So we took all of this Ark geometry and revealed how it reveals other things, and um, that's what we kind of stayed with at the Integratron, and had a pretty incredible experience. Every time we go there now, um, from the video, I, I was approached by this guy in South Africa, an audio engineer named Derek. And he had been sort of toying around with this idea of playing with these geometrically aligned frequencies, but not seeing them necessarily in a whole contained grid, which I just stumbled on by plugging in a couple of extra <laughs> numbers, 432 and 288 and 144, as well as all the geometric numbers, 180s and 540s and 2160s. And all of a sudden, that revealed this grid of all frequencies adding up to nine, and you could move up and down the scale by factors of nine. So in the video, I call it the factor nine grid. Play these frequencies inside the Integratron, and crazy, crazy things happen. Um, it, the, the machine itself feels like it's almost being turned on and cycling these frequencies, and then to the point that we hear... Um, like an angel choir, music that is not even there. We hear human voices. Did you hear those? You know, somebody there? Yeah, I, heard, I mean, it was really um, a really interesting experience. What I did is I walked around. It's okay. Let me just say that uh, while the tones are going on, it's really loud, and it's like the, the Tegatron is like you're inside of a speaker. Yes. And um, you're feeling the music, and it's just not necessarily so loud as it is just you feel it it's powerful it, you, you're vibrating and i walked around try, trying to get sweet spots you know and i could feel all different kinds of things depending on where i walked inside the building and at one point i grabbed the main uh, circle column. in the middle mm -hmm. and that thing is just vibrating right and there's it's kind of like a piano there's all little metal things around it and there's all these wires and stuff you right. know um the, the the thing that i notice about the integratron is that that little model you made, or I don't know, I should talk about that model, but the model you made is an image that I've been seeing in the sweat lodge, and I saw it in that building. When we're doing the sound bath and during that thing, 
and if you close your eyes and it's completely dark and you put your hands over your eyes and you're in that in that integratron or in the sweat lodge you see that thing that you made that little thing the basic one the basic right thing. it's it looks like, like a 12 sided snowflake right it's a 3d thing and it kind of spins around and it's surrounded by like an aura of a rainbow right it looks like an eye that's the thing that I see in the sweat lodge, and I've been seeing, you know, in a lot of places when I close my eyes and really uh, concentrate, it's completely dark. You see this kind of three-dimensional structure right. that kind of moves around, and it's got spikes to it. It's like it's got, uh, it's like four and then two, and but it's three-dimensional, so it's all around. But I never was able to figure out how many it had until I seen that little thing you made, the little right. a lot statue. Of times, it's, it's funny, people, I, I'm sure there's got to be people listening to this going, well, that sounds very trippy. But if you kind of listen to relaxing music, close your eyes and look deep, like if you're looking at stars but your eyes are closed and it's very dark, you might be surprised to see that you will see geometric patterns yeah. uh, begin to materialize. And often they do look like the flower contained within the, right. the seed of life. That's that six-petaled flower. But what we were experimenting with was a, a three-dimensional, 12-petaled version of that. Right. Um, so it's, I think it's the God part of Goa. I, it, I think it's what we can see God as. Well, and it is so interesting throughout history that this eye, is it the eye or is it the shape that, you know, th that's really the message coming through? Well, and that eye is 60 degrees of arc again. So... Yeah. It's, it's very compelling, um, all this, and we heard, uh, I did a, a, a couple times, I, it's so weird, and I know that overtones can do this in music, kind of sound like human voices, but um, I heard it like never before, and people were kind of tripping out a little bit that we were playing straight, humming frequencies, very steady, but we were hearing what sounded like melody lines, like female voices singing uh, a, a melody, and then even a male voice kind of coming in at the end and sort of mumbling something. So it's a, it's a very trippy experience. If you're interested in, in joining us out there, we'll be going back uh, out April 26th. It's a sleepover event, one of your rare opportunities to actually spend the night in the Integratron, which is now attracting celebrities and movie stars and everybody. It's becoming kind of the new it thing to do, but very hard to get the, uh, the overnight experience, which is what we do over there. We A lot of backstory visiting uh, nearby geological locations before we go into the Integratron. So you can go to sonicgeometry.com slash sleepover and get all the info about that. Michelle, did you, it looks like you're looking at... I went, while well, well, she's got her thoughts, yeah. I went, I went uh, to that, to your last one, and it was great. It was like beautiful people, and it's beautiful land, and it's not only beautiful, but it's got a, this trippy energy, and there's that, that big giant rock and that quartz mountain, and um, the whole experience is just mind blowing. They got a nice facilities there. The bathrooms are nice. The you know the eating areas is nice. The, they light a campfire for you. It was a, just a really wonderful experience. It is a nice experience. They yeah. do a great job. The owners there are great stewards of the place. Oh, Joanne and yeah. Nancy Carl. Probably. Yeah, I love them. They were so nice. Yeah, two sisters <laughs> Yay. from New York. There's a, a, another sister, but there's two that are primarily on the on the property that. Um, facilitate this and they're very gracious you know they could be very close like here here's what we do and they play crystal bowls for people yeah um, you know for about an hour they call them sound baths yeah and it's very great to feel those and then you're kind of done so it's yeah. like next session next session next session yeah and then they open it up to people if you want to arrange something or they've had physicists and scientists and of all kinds of audio people coming in and trying to tap into the mystery of this yeah. machine and see if certain frequencies can do something and they allow it they invite right, it right. so it's it's a really amazing experience for us and i'm very grateful that i live as close as i do to it and then afterwards we went to joshua it was so cool yeah, i heard you <laughs> joshua joshua tree after, yeah. <laughs> she knows i don't say no so she has it over on me i have to do whatever she says <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to be a full experience. It really was. I, I, uh, I knew that I'd have you kidnapped for a week, and we made the we made it a very magnificent week. Full, I just, I just want to give a shout out to Brian, man. He is so awesome, man. It's just like that's my. I husband. mean, yeah, <laughs> God, he's a. He's really cool, man. I just he has such a beautiful house and such a beautiful life and leads such a cool life, man. It's just he took me out to dinner tonight and it was just awesome. And he's man, I just wanna give my appreciation to 
to Brian. Thanks for, for, sure. me. Thanks for sharing your beautiful life. Shopper, dragon, <laughs> yeah, shopper, he's dragon. awesome, man. Yeah. His house is all dragons and mm-hmm. Vikings, yeah. so it's cool. He, he was talking tonight about his experiences at the Integratron, and one of the things that he said at, a, at the dinner table, yeah. he talked about Joanne and Drake, he talked about them playing with the souls, and he talked about when Don plays the dogs, and he got a little choked up. Mm-hmm. He said he just really feels the loving energy that comes from, it, it's almost like when you go to the Integratron with love in your heart, it amplifies that love in your heart. And that's always my piece, is that getting the people from the mind to the heart, and that I feel that we're being guided to, to go out there so that we can spread this love to all life and all dimensions, and not just look at the little cookie crumbs that led us there would actually do something tangible with it while we're in a body on earth. Yeah. Let it, you know, ha- sharing the experience through our, our feelers, but allowing spirits that don't actually have a body to feel through our feelers by us inviting that energy to be present, the loving presence. Yeah, it's all very positive. Um, it's, it's a very positive, uplifting, energetic experience uh, it's funny uh, people I, myself included will feel often very heavy and tired after the experience it's almost like you got a, a moment to feel almost your light body only and then you you remember that you're dragging this you know hundreds of pounds of, of flesh and water and bone around with you and moving through air often I'm, yeah. I'm very aware of how I'm moving through air after. especially on the quads yeah exactly <laughs> Well, we we have to talk full, about that. We had a full weekend. We got to do all kinds of fun stuff. So, was do you think that Gloria was going to come in? Should we even mention that? Is she like she, she's, she's ready? Right. Okay, Gloria, why don't you call yeah, in? This is someone who too. went with us uh, to the Integratron. Uh, we had um, tw- low twenties, twenty two, twenty three people with us, which is a great size group. It could hold up to maybe forty, but that would be a really packed crowd. It's a uh, the diameter of this round building is about 50 feet, it's about 40 feet high. Um, you can Google it. it. It's such a fascinating story of how it came into being and that truly people with very delicate electronic instruments, there's a, a, a <laughs> geophysicist that went there and all d- magnetic deviation from their compass kept pointing back to the middle of the where the Integratron stands to actually walking around it and the deviation was still pointing to the middle of the Integratron as if it really was built on a very specific you know, spot. So, so many people were having problems with their batteries. Like, yeah, electronics uh, always. Yeah, even the electric there. car or the yeah the the yeah the electric car that was there had problems. Yeah, I I had taken electric um, my keyboard or my speakers or my mixer stuff that I always use in my band always works flawlessly and it will just cut out right. and stay and I have to reboot it or pl- unplug it plug it back in. It's the weirdest thing. Definitely, Tyler, the the ma- station manager here. He's real skeptical about anything, and he, and he uh, held his compass, iPhone compass, and walked around the building, and as soon as he touched it to the center column, the thing just like dissipated in a cloud of white. Whoa. The compass just went blank, and he Whoa. looked at that and he goes, oh my gosh. He sent me a picture of it. I mean, wow. it actually started. So there's definitely something going on out there, and if you want to, listener, I'm talking to you, if you want to... Uh, Participate. If you can be in Southern California, you go to sonicgeometry.com, find a way to, to reach me, my phone number and what uh, address is there, my email address. You can, we'll put it together. It's an awesome experience, full, full of mystery, but uh, it feels like we're on a on an unfolding path of discovery. And, and it just feels like it keeps opening up and sharing a little bit more information with us. Okay. Do, you so have really to play, do you have to play a so, no, I, we can just Lord? No, we can just... Okay, uh, so. Actually, yeah, let's let's go to a song <laughs> real quick. Let's see. We'll listen to Michelle. We'll listen to one of Michelle's favorite songs, and then we'll be back. Here we go.